Okay. All right, good evening. Hi, I am Chris Trazik, Chairman of the Heritage Commission, and I'm calling this meeting to order. If I can just do a quick roll call, I have Carol Bruce, Katie Sullivan, Jill Fletcher, Judy Keene, Amy Widorf, Joshua Torrance, Julie Lemos, here. Charlie Ford, and then I believe we have two guests, Wesley Brolick and Lyra Schweizer. Did I get it right? Yes, you did. I'm really impressed most people <laughs> don't, but both first and last name you got right. <laughs> Great. So calling this meeting to order. Um, Peter, do we have a, do we have, I'm sorry, I'm trying to pull up the agenda. Um, February, so 20, February 21 minutes. February 21 minutes, thank you. Yes, I just got it. So can I have a motion to approve the minutes of the February meeting? So moved. Thank you, Katie, do I have a second? Thank you, Judy. Any corrections, additions, deletions, edits, spelling check? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Great. I Aye. need a little hand raising, you know, on Zoom so you can just, you know, people can raise their hands. Maybe I should just do the thumbs up reaction. <laughs> right? Because that way everybody knows. There you go. See? Everybody can do it. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so Wesley uh, is from the Times Fool Theater Company, which is a local um, theater company. So Wesley... You are on the docket for a few minutes to talk about the program and the theater company. Sure, I get. Do I get to go now? Is it like? You do. Oh, oh, jinkies, Batman! <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> sure. So my name is Wesley Brolick, and uh, I am co-producing artistic director of Times Fool Company. Uh, we are located here in Wethersfield. We are new. We are a nonprofit. We are a 5013C tax exempt organization. Uh, and our goal is to bring free outdoor Shakespeare and professional theater here to Wethersfield. Uh, we take our name from Sonnet 116 by William Shakespeare. Let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediment. Um, and there's a lovely line in there about how love's not time's fool. Uh, a little bit about our mission. We believe art is a human right. And one of the most direct ways we believe in connecting people with art is through access. And we achieve access by sharing work in public spaces or shared spaces and ensuring that cost is not a barrier. Uh, that's why all of our events are donation-based or pay what you will. Uh, our work itself is rooted in Shakespeare and classic stories uh, because of their universal nature. You know, these stories have stood the test of time for a multitude of reasons. And for some reason, we as human beings gravitate towards these stories um, because we connect with the truths contained in them and uh, we see ourselves reflected in them. So I, I lead the organization with my colleague, Christy Mitoro. Uh, we're both internationally regarded theater artists. Uh, I used to run uh, programs out of uh, a bunch of different programs out of Shakespeare's Globe. I trained at Shakespeare's Globe as a director. Um, I did my graduate studies at Rutgers University. Um, our board is currently comprised, it's an international, it's a national board uh, from artists across the country. Um, we're not a fiscal board because we decided to separate governance from philanthropy. Um, so that way we could make sound decisions. Um, I mean, we didn't want people to have to buy in to be a part of the board. Um, let me see, uh, we, a little bit about us, so, so, why Weathersfield, I guess, would be a good question, place to start. Um, I moved here recently from outside the community um, and we chose to buy a house here in Weathersfield because we love it and we kept looking at houses all over and uh, we just kept coming again and again and back and back to Weathersfield and just how special we felt it was. And so we decided to buy here. Uh, my spouse, um, works at Wesleyan and so we could have lived in Middletown or all over and we chose here. Um, as a theater artist, when we got to Weathersfield, I was really, really excited um, because the community is so open to uh, arts culture uh, 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 with, with visual arts and with its heritage tourism, which is really, really strong here, right? And one of the things that I felt that I could bring to the table 
um, by opening a company here is, is other communities have professional permanent companies, right? West Hartford has two, right? And Weathersfield, I feel that it deserved one of its own. Um, so to that end, I just felt it was a really good pairing. Um, you guys, we have an amazing, strong sense of community here. Uh, it has a great track record of community events uh, 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 and uh, the heritage tourism is amazing. Uh, it's also a beautiful place with a lot of unique public spaces and artistically, I found that really curious. And I found that really engaging because uh, how we use space is so important. And there are, it's just, yeah, it's very unique here. Uh, 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 as someone who's a new to it, like maybe you guys are immune to it by now, walking around, I don't know. But I know that coming in new here, I mean, every time I turn a corner, I find a new co a new space to be like, oh my gosh, and I run, right? I know I'm, I'm a big dude, but I do run. And, and um, you know, my seven mile, my seven miler takes me through almost every nook and cranny of old Weathersfield, right? And so every time I'm, I'm exploring these new spaces where I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so amazing. And I just think it would be great for a theater company to be able to take advantage of that and to be able to, to build upon that and explore that. Um, so for us, our, our programming right now, the way we're imagining it is that it's built around several events. The large event would be an outdoor summer Shakespeare. Uh, and then around that, we'd have a Halloween event. Why? Because I love Halloween. Uh, I, I loved Scarecrows on Main this year. I thought it was awesome. I cannot wait to do a Shakespeare themed Scarecrow. Um, we're going to be doing a Shakespeare themed bike. You better believe it. Um, so we're all pumped for these events. And there's a wonderful sense of inclusivity. And it was great seeing in a pandemic, all the people being able to partake in something outdoors together. And I found that really inspiring. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, and, 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 it's amazing that the community could come together in such a way. So we, we, I was, I was stoked to launch this company. We were going to do a Christmas event, and then the Actors Equity, the Actors Union, um, would not issue us a contract because the COVID numbers were so high. We were going to do an outdoor Christmas Carol um, at Heirloom Market um, with Spiro and Julia's help, and so we had to pivot. And then we quickly released it as a podcast. And even then, I was overwhelmed. I was, I was, I was chuffed and, and kind of. Um, heartened by it, you know, we had, we had over 800 downloads or unique interactions with, um, with the podcast, uh, with people streaming and that, that spoke volumes to me. And I know that we have a bit of a national reach with Times Fool, uh, but I know a lot of those had to come from Connecticut um, when I was looking at the map and the geographic map. And so that was really great to see. Uh, why am I talking here to some of you all right now? Well, A, Peter asked me, so thank you, Peter. Um, for uh, invite me along. And then I kind of want to talk about the value of arts to everybody else for a sec, right? And then we'll open it up some questions. Um, according to all the leading tourism journals, the three greatest drivers of tourism are, anyone want to take a guess? Gardens. Not quite, take a guess though, but good guess. Shopping. What it's arts and culture. Shopping. Well, it is sports. It is casinos. <laughs> And the third is live theater events, yeah. right? And you have to remember about art, the arts, right? It's a $730 billion industry. It is 4.2% 4 of our nation's GDP. It is a larger share of our economy than transportation, tourism, agriculture, and construction, right? And when I started looking at numbers of how we could contribute, because you know, the question is, you know, I'm running a nonprofit organization. So of course my hand's always going to be out like this saying, please help. I do want to make it clear though, that uh, I don't believe in big donors. I would rather have a thousand people give me a hundred dollars than one person give me a hundred thousand dollars for a multitude of reasons, right? Because that is how you build community and any arts organization and any nonprofit is only as strong as the community that supports it. And if everybody sends in a hundred dollars, then by golly, we have a lot of love and a lot of support yep. within that community. I'm gonna ask you to speed it up and roll it up. Absolutely, not a problem. So just the impact real quick. Uh, 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 based on a, a great study, an impact study from 2015 from Americans for the Arts, the typical theater attendee spends $31.47 per person on things around going to the theater, such as meals, drinks, et cetera. One third of all attendees, 34% of attendees at any not-for-profit theater event are from outside the county where the event took place. And those people who travel from outside the county uh, spend $47.57 versus uh, uh, what people locally spend. So in terms of economic impact numbers, to make it real simple for you all, 
if we, when we hold a Shakespeare play in Wethersfield for one week or for four performances averaging 800 people, that's approximately $25,176 that people will spend in the Wethersfield community in drinks and coffees and food and in, and in shopping. And almost 300 people will be coming from outside Hartford County. So the basic number is for every dollar that's spent on live theatrical arts, $1.6 is what's spent back in the community. And I guess that's kind of why I wanted to come today. So as we start learning about each other and as we have more conversations, and I'm sure I'll be talking a lot to all of you at some point and maybe asking for your help, um, that's a pretty big impact, right? And that's something that um, um, I think that we can all agree is, uh, is, is, is an investment worth making. So any questions about us, what we do, how we can help? So questions? Judy. Where will the uh, plays be held? Uh... That is a great question. We are looking at a couple of locations, one of which is I would love to do uh, work on uh, the Broad Street Common on the green there. Uh, the great thing about Outdoor Shakespeare is that we start at six o'clock and we're all done and gone before nine. So there shouldn't be a much bother to the neighbors at all. And one week event shouldn't offset anyone's afternoon too badly. Uh, we're also looking at other locations. So we want to do a Halloween event and we want to do it site specific. One of the things we're looking at doing for this fall is taking uh, Macbeth and then deconstructing it and setting it up. Maybe the witches are in uh, the cemetery. Maybe the porter is having a drink and lucky lose, but deconstruct the play. And so that way, when you register for the event, you get a map and you walk and you can rotate through all these different scenes in Macbeth on rotation throughout Old Weathersfield. And part of what we can do is really embrace and enhance and explore and celebrate all these unique locations that we have. And it would be a one weekend event because something like that's a, a massive undertaking, but it would be a lot of fun to do. And I think it could really be a gas and contribute a lot to the community. So that's that just some of the things we're talking about doing. Yep. Amy. You're muted. You're muted, Amy. There we go. I was <laughs> it is. Um, hi, Wesley. It's great to meet you on Zoom. Um, uh, I think you talked to Dr. Joe Pascal. Uh, <laughs> so we're excited that you're coming to town. I would like to talk to you about my Lantern Light Tours, which is now in its 11th or 12th year, um, which this year is going to be October 15th and 16th. Okay. Uh, barring a hurricane. Um, <laughs> is that what it hit last year? Is that what it hit? on wood or a blizzard. You never know. Got it. Um, uh, but this is basically, it's a theater event um, that we've been doing with volunteers and it is our most popular event. Um, and if, it, if it's only two days, I bet I can find, mm -hmm. I bet I know some board members who'd be willing to help mm -hmm. out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I bet I can, right. I bet I can kick, I bet I can look under a few rocks and find you a few volunteers if you need them who might be theatrically inclined. Okay. I'm going to let you guys take that part of the conversation yeah. offline. <laughs> okay. Thanks. <laughs> Anyone else have any questions? Just welcome. So will you, I just Thank have you. I just have one quick question. Sure, Melinda. Are you going to have are you going to have a um a location that's considered your your home base for for the theater performers? Uh in turn un un unpack the question a little more for me in terms of like a, a permanent so rehearsal where, space or? Where will you hold your rehearsals? That's what I'm actually on the lookout for now to scout out a couple of locations where we can hold rehearsals. I want to do it. So full disclosure, like I, I teach at CCSU, right? I can get free rehearsal space here. That's not the point, right? I want the actors that we're working with to be able to engage with Old Weathersfield, right? and be able to buy coffees and buy drinks and shop and get a bite to eat and be engaged in the community in a way. So I am looking for uh, rehearsal space uh, that we can utilize in, in, in Weathersfield proper. And so I'm on the lookout. So if you have suggestions, I will gladly Excellent. take them. Okay. Okay. All right, any other questions for Wesley? Um, I don't, it's not really a question. Uh, I just wanted to let him know that um, I'm gonna add him to my email list. Yep. And when event, and whenever, and when and anything that's going on, uh, just let me know, and I add it to social media, add it to our websites, and all that, and uh, I do all the promoting. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, and my apologies, because Jesse, I missed you on the roll call. Um, so right. your Jesse's here and Melinda Robodeau joined us after we finished the roll call. Um, so Wesley, Jesse is our, um, um, Oh my God, an IT kind of guru. He does all of our social media, uh, does a newsletter on a monthly basis of events and the rest of it. So a uh, good place to get on uh, on his newsletter. Chris, I just wanna, if I just make a quick comment and say that I've had the pleasure of uh, having a couple of meetings with Wesley and I can mm -hmm. attest that he's just as engaging with us uh, in person as he is on Zoom. And uh, <laughs> I know that the Web Dean Stevens were super excited to work with them and figure out some way, but uh, you know, I just, as a fellow newcomer, it's exciting to see someone that's got all this great passion. Oh, oh shucks. Thanks, and I will that. say any nonprofits out there, um, let's talk and see about ways we might be able to piggyback with grants. And I mean that sincerely, as you know, anyone who's, who's doing grant writing, like if you can have multiple organizations finding ways to work together, uh, it makes uh, the folks handing out the money much more inclined to do so. Um, so we should put our, our brain buckets on and, uh, and uh, do some uh, ideating and some generative thinking on how that might happen. Yeah, no, I agree. Well, thank you. Welcome to the community. I look forward to it. Um, I, um, I used to do Capital Classics all the time. Oh, yeah. Over at, yes, <clears throat> over at University of uh, St. Joe's. So looking forward to it. Charlie Forstick has also joined us. So just adding that to the roll call. Um, thank you so much, Wesley. You are more than welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting if you'd like. Yeah, I want to. I want to find out about. I want. I want to know who Lear is. Let's. Let's. I, I'm. I'm in for the meeting now. Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right, and then we have a second guest, Lyra. You might want to unmute yourself because you're coming up next. And I'm sorry. <laughs> and Lyra, you're Sufa, correct? Yeah, that's right. Okay, so I'm going to let you explain what Sufa <laughs> is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, great. So, so nice to meet you, everyone. Um, thanks, Leslie, for your great presentation. I'm actually based in central Jersey, about 20 minutes from Rutgers. So um, nice to meet you. Um, so yeah, I will go ahead and share my screen. I have a quick presentation that I'll just run through to tell you a little bit more about the product, um, as well as how we typically work with cities. So I will do that right now. Um, it says that the host disabled screen sharing. Is there any chance you could help me? Enabled. Yep. Yep. And if you are not muted, somebody might, we might want to mute ourselves because I hear feedback. Um, great. So let me try to share it again. Right now. Um, okay, perfect. There we go. That should work. Thanks. Thanks so much. Great. Um, so every, really nice to meet you all. Um, my name is Lyra Schweitzer. I'm the director of city growth at SUFA. Um, SUFA is a female founded startup out of MIT. We were founded about six years ago and we really have a vision of bringing smart and sustainable technologies in to communities in a responsible way with a focus on equitability and sustainability. So to give you a bit of an overview on the hardware itself of the SUFA sign, which is the technology that we're currently focused on, it is an 100% solar powered digital sign. So it's a zero emissions technology um, and the screen that you see here is made out of e-ink technology. So I am assuming that you guys have all used or at least seen a Kindle before. Great, so it's the exact same material. And for those of you who have used one before, you know that it's really high resolution, um, really high contrast, black and white. And what's great about it too is that there's no glare when it's sunny out. Um, and also what's really important to us is that, you know, there's no flashing lights, video or LCD coming from the screen. Um, so it doesn't contribute to any kind of light pollution in the neighborhoods that we install in. And we really want it to resemble more of a front page newspaper for the community, um, which is how we also sort of came up with that layout of the screen that you see there. And lastly, we do also have a sensor embedded within the sign that is able to give a proxy for pedestrian traffic um, in a 25 foot radius of where the sign is installed. So it's really interesting for understanding usage of public spaces in the cities that we work with. Um, and I'll go into a little bit more detail about how that works towards the later end of the presentation. So as you can see here, um, there's multiple pieces of, of information showing at the screen at one time. 
Um, the thing that's most important is that this local updates box that you see here in the upper left hand corner is reserved for the city news and communications at all times. So whenever someone is walking by the sign, they will see a piece of information or communication from the city. Um, this would obviously be a great way to promote, you know, the Shakespeare Festival, if there were to be one or any other events that are hope happening locally. And it's just a really important way to reach both visitors as well as residents who might not otherwise be subscribed to online sources of information from the city. We do also have a box underneath for advertising for local businesses. Um, and that's how we sort of bring revenue in from the sign and we share back 20% of that revenue with the city as well. Um, and then lastly, on the right hand side of the screen here, you can see a few different applets and we do have a few different options to make the city the screen sort of totally customized to what the city's needs are. So to go into a little bit more detail about what some of those applets are, we can show a local events calendar that will automatically pull from the city's events calendar and show what events are happening in the next day or in the next week. Um, again, it seems like you know this is a, a historic city that brings in a lot of visitors and there's probably a lot of events going on, especially um, post COVID, hopefully in the next few months. And so this is a really great way to advertise that on the sign to anyone walking by them. We also have the ability to show weather um, as well as live transit information. So arrival times of the next bus or the train if it's located near a bus or train stop. Um, we can also integrate into the city emergency alert system if there is one and make sure that emergency alerts are reaching everyone even if they might not have access to Wi-Fi or to a phone. Um, we have a polling applet, which I love. It's a great way to get civic feedback. So the city can post questions on the sign and people can text in their answers and we'll feedback all that information back to the city. So again, you know, when there are festivals or other events going around, you can say, what was your favorite part of today's event? And then people can text in answers and we get hundreds of, of responses every day. Um, we also have a what's open box here that we really developed in the past few months in response to COVID to spotlight local businesses for free near the sign that are open and really help to drive traffic to the stores, especially because there are so many visitors to Weathersfield. It's a good way to highlight those local businesses and maybe bring them to their storefronts. So, you know, this is a bit technical, but just to give you a background on how the city would communicate to the sign, um, there's a, we have an online platform where you can easily post new information and then it's showing automatically on the screens outdoors. So it's a really simple way to just reach people in the outdoors. And we also have a uh, pedestrian data analytic and visualization tool that you're able to access at any time. So depending on where the sign is installed, it gives you really interesting analytics and insight into how people are using the space around the sign. Um, I think during COVID especially, this was such an important data source um, and piece for cities to understand, you know, how is pedestrian traffic uh, switching? We saw like a really large increase in residential areas, for example, and, and decrease in the commercial ones. And now we're able to monitor the extent to which people are rec returning to commercial areas. Um, it was really great for understanding traffic patterns, you know, what time of the day are people most out and about. And um, we found that during COVID, actually the, the peak traffic hours shifted towards the evening from around 5 to 6 p.m. to about 9 p.m. And we can feed that information back to local businesses and they can choose if they want to adjust their opening hours accordingly. So it's a really uh, amazing data source that you can use for different insights and, and actions within the city. Lastly, um, you know, I've been talking a lot about what's on the front of the sign and sort of the digital screen to show real time communications from the city. But on the back of the sign, we do have si a space reserved for city wayfinding. Um, so we can create work with you to create a, a, a vinyl that really matches the character of the city. I know Weathersfield is, is a historic city and, and we work with several other historic and even Victorian towns and cities in Massachusetts, for example, we work with Amherst and Brookline. And we even created a vinyl that really incorporates that historic element includes some of the key landmark buildings, some historic facts. Um, so we'd be really open to working with you to do something similar um, in Weathersfield. And then lastly, you know, this is a little bit of the nitty gritty here, but just want to be totally transparent about how we do work with cities. Um, you know, we ask for permission to install in, in the public right of way on the sidewalk. And then in exchange, we provide, uh, you know, 20% share of that net advertising revenue annually. 100% of airtime in this content block, um, a custom vinyl decal, like you can see here, this is one that we created for a beach town um, in Massachusetts. 
uh, with a neighborhood map on the back highlighting public locations. Um, we'll give you that pedestrian data and we can also add in real time arrival times for trains and buses. And then we, you know, we take care of all sort of the logistics behind the sign so that it's not added work for the city. So that includes weekly cleaning and maintenance, um, installation as well as the content management of, of the signs. So I know that was a, a lot of information and quite quickly, I like to return to this screen here um, because it shows a little bit of what kind of information is showing on the sign and I'd be happy to take any questions. I have a I have a question and <clears throat> you may have covered this and I may have missed it. What is what is the actual um, material that the signs are or, or these um, billboards, if you will, what is the material that they're made out of? Um, so the screen is made out of e-ink, which is electronic paper. So um, again, I, I mentioned this previously, but it, what's great about that is that there's no light emitting from the sign whatsoever. It really is like electronic paper, like you see on a Kindle. Um, and so it's not contributing to any kind of light pollution in any sense, like a traditional billboard would. What is the base made out of? The base is made out of, um, I, I would have to double check. I'm pretty sure it's aluminum is, is sort of the frame that it's made wrapped around. Are you able to send us late, you know, later after um, some shots of the ones that are for the historic district, just yeah. some of the designs? Absolutely, yeah. I can I can send that over to, to Peter and then he can share it with the rest of the committee. Can you say that that's the basic design, right? So you can, when you say design, you can design the the the, that's the skin. A, that's but exactly the right. actual design of the unit. That's that is the design. Yeah. Thanks for clarifying. So the form factor, like the act, the shape of the sign, that's um, you know standardized. It's the same. But like you see here and here, the skin. I, lo I love that way of describing it. Is totally customizable, both in the yes. front and in the back. So you can have um, you know elements of design from the front as well as the back. Right. Can you, would be, do, you have, would be, do you have a picture of the whole thing so we can see the top of it and yep. how big the top of it is? Yep. Um, so this is sort of probably our best shot. You can see probably the solar panel peeking up yeah. here, um, that black thing. So um, they're really slim actually in person. They're about three inches wide um, and they sort of spout out at the base and at the um, top. Okay. Right. I'm, I'm going to call them a kiosk because I think it's the easiest way to describe okay. it. Um, so you talked about the operating agreement, but I'm assuming there is an initial cost and installation. Yeah, that's, that's a great question. There is an initial co-investment with the city. Um, you know, the, the signs, the hardware itself is, uh, you know, a few tens of thousands of dollars. Um, and so we just asked the city to, to contribute about roughly a quarter of that as a co-investment in the beginning. Um, and then we are confident that through advertising revenue, we'll be able to recoup the rest of the investment um, throughout the years following the installation um, and even share back revenue. So um, that's sort of the agreement there. And what is the installation required? Does it need electrical supply? Does it need? Yeah, internet? that's a great question. So I think what's so great about the fact that it's solar powered, not just that it's sustainable, but it's also really practical. It's a 30 minute installation process. It's basically four bolts into the sidewalk. Um, the sign's bolted down and then it's already working. So no electrical connection required. They have a SIM card with 4G um, in there. So they're, you know, 4G connected and that's how they're updating with new information. Okay. And operation in crappy weather? <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. So our first signs actually were launched in Boston. So we've dealt with our fair share of snow and, and rain. Um, there is a battery inside the sign that can power the sign for several days if there hasn't been enough sun. And we also monitor the battery levels at all times and we, we swap out batteries and we find that they're getting low. Um, worst case, when there's snow and it's physically covering the solar panel, we'll send our signs into a snow day. So the screen, as I'm, again, if anyone has a Kindle, you'd know it can show an image even when there's zero power. That's why your Kindle never looks blank. There's always some advertisement mm -hmm. on there. So we'll just have a, a standard snow image saying like, you know, this sign is sleeping for today. It's a snow day, enjoy, but it will never look like a blank screen. Okay. 
So um, Lyra, I understand that you collect local data that we would have access to understand what's going on, but what do you do with the collective data? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so, you know, one thing to note about the data is that it's super secure. We encrypt everything and we also randomize all the data as soon as we get it so that there's no personally identifiable data. It purely acts as a counter. Um, so how the sensor works is that when it picks up on cell phone Wi-Fi probes within a 25 foot radius of a sign and just kind of counts them. Um, so we're not collecting any kind of personal data, of course. And then what we do with that data is you know, SUFA is not really doing that much with it on our end. Um, we just share it back to the city and the city sort of owns that data. Other questions? I can't see everybody on my screen, so. Is there, yeah. is there any, <clears throat> I understand that you, you probably have limited um, options in regards to how this is presented, but you know, for the historic district, I'm thinking it would be kind of nice to have something that was in keeping with a sign that you would have seen that was period appropriate. Do you have that flexibility or no? Unfortunately, with the actual form factor, like the hardware, we don't have that flexibility. But again, I, I do think the skin um, can really transform how it looks. And I'll send over those pictures um, so that you guys can get a better understanding. And we could even design it to look like a sign from that time. Well, there are any of the other cities or towns that have used this have been able to get grant funds for their share of it? Yeah, they have. Um, that's a really good question. So actually three of the cities we work with in the past few months have used CARES Act funding for this sign um, because it's showing COVID information. A lot of the cities are sharing vaccination and testing resources in multiple languages. Um, so it's it's been an important part of that outreach. Um, in addition to that, you know, when there's downtown funds or when there's sort of artists or community building funds, those can be successful as well. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, this this is Judy um, speaking. You had said that it's pedestrian interactive when they're touching the screen. So there's no, it's not a touch screen, um, which is I think especially important right now. So it, uh, you know, you you're it's primarily reading it. The way that it's interactive is that there's a question posed by the city on the sign, and then people can text in answers and see their oh. answers appearing. Okay. So that's okay. as, as interactive as it gets. Okay, okay. And you said that the town would have access to changing the information that's on the screen. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, the town can post new information at any time. It can schedule things, put information ahead of time. It can delete stuff. So um, really has control over that piece completely. Okay, all right. Other questions people have? Nope. Yeah, I, I had a question. Does it does it scroll through pages? Yeah, that's exactly right. So I like to think of it kind of as a slideshow. As many pieces of information as is uploaded, it rotates through. So obviously, the less you have, the more screen time it will show, but it will be less diverse information. Whereas if you have 20 pieces and it's rotating through that throughout the day, there's a lot more interesting new stuff on the screen. Um, and it updates every few minutes. Good question. All right. Other questions? All right. Um, I think we're all set then, Lyra. So you're going to send Peter more pictures of some of the historic communities. Can you also send um, the, I'm assuming it's a template of the operating agreement? Yes, mm -hmm. I will do that. Okay. Um, Peter, is there anything else we should have her send to us? No, I, I think, um, I, and I may already have some of that, but um, okay. Lara, if you could send it again, just Absolutely. to double double check, that would yep. that would be be great. Thank you. I'll go ahead and do that. Thanks. Yep. Thanks everyone for for letting me speak today. It's great to meet you all. Yeah, nice to meet you too. Thanks for coming. Thank you very much. So, and you know what, Lara, could you send the location yep. of the sign in Amherst only yep. because that's fairly close? Okay, absolutely. I'll do that as well. Someone wanted to take a drive and take a look at it. Yeah, I would I would love it if you did it. We installed there over Christmas, so they're actually our new signs. They're looking great. So yeah, I'll definitely send you that. Okay. Thank right. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Yep.
So also joining us, Peter, just so you know, we have uh, Betty Standish, Damien, Damien, I can't pronounce your last name, Crigo. Yes, Crigo, thank you. Crigo, thank you. Okay. Um, so um, oh, for some reason, okay. So um, do you, let's go into, we'll go back to sofa signs in a second. Um, I'm going to run through some of the open items. So, Peter, old business EV charging station. Okay, I'm learning uh, way more than I ever cared to learn about <laughs> EV charging stations. Just for the for the record, um, there are a couple of folks in the community who are uh, very much uh, uh, dialed into the EV charging uh, station. Um, there's there's some things on the horizon that might uh, create some fi financing uh, for them. Uh, the so, the, so we've been pulling all that information together. Uh, one of the things we have posed to the Chamber of Commerce, I don't think Deb uh, is here tonight, but nope. uh, they have um, in previous years done the car show. Uh, so we pitched the idea, if they are going to do that, that we see if we can carve out uh, an EV uh, portion of that car show and try and focus in on uh, the electric vehicle uh, part of the car market and then potentially use that for some crowd funding opportunities if in fact the financing does not become available and we want to go back to sustainable CT for the for the financing. So I'm going to mute uh, Charlie there because he's uh, um, so um, so that's really the the main main progress since uh, our last meeting that uh, so I'm waiting to hear back from the chamber. If that is something they want to do, um, and then we can circle back and start discussing the details of that. So um, that's what I have to report tonight. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, the visitor map and kiosk. So for those who don't know, because I don't think we talked about it at the last meeting, we got the Connecticut Humanities Grant. Kudos! Yay! Yay! So uh, actually, I've got a kickoff meeting with uh, Trinity Church and the Great Meadows Conservation Trust uh, folks right after this meeting at 6.30 tonight. So if anyone um, wants to participate in that, I didn't want to impose upon you guys. Uh, maybe at a point in time in the future when the panels are starting to come together, we can get some feedback on that. But uh, so we're just kicking that off tonight. Uh, they have to be installed by, I think it's November 23rd. Uh, so we're on a bit of a fast track to make sure uh, that happens. Um, and uh, so, yes, we're happy to report that. Um, and we've got the, uh, the old team back together again. So um, uh, David Wolfram has agreed to help with the design. Uh, Phil Lohman is helping, obviously, with the maps uh, and other odds and ends. So uh, we're probably going to go back to the same sign manufacturer and we even even uh, were contacted by Rocky Hill. They're thinking about uh, mimicking our design. So if they do that, uh, we can probably realize some savings on economies of scale if they do buy some signs, because the, if we're only gonna do one or two, unfortunately the price is pretty much double what it was when we first yeah. installed them. So we're looking to uh, maybe see if we can uh, work together on that if the timing uh, allows for that, so. Okay, great. All right. Um, okay. Any questions for Peter? All right. Heritage Commission membership and appointments. Any updates, Peter? Nothing. Nothing new to report. Okay. Restaurant brochure promotion. So um, we we did uh, draft the initial uh, QR code. Yeah. Um, and we did put that out on some social media. So we're going to. Uh, start encouraging people to post that and share that. Uh, so that is now done. Uh, we have continued to get interest from the other communities about doing a multi-town, uh, but I really have not had the time uh, to carve out and uh, spend on that. So, um, so that's kind of a longer term uh, proposition, but nevertheless, the uh, promotional flyer for uh, eating Weathersfield Eats Local uh, is out there and is starting to um, get some, get some, uh, life. I did, uh, Jesse's on the call, so Jesse and I compared notes. We did find that there's a couple of updates on our restaurant list that we need to make, uh, so we're doing that as well at the same time. 
So it was just a couple of things that we weren't uh, completely up to speed with. Yeah. And this is townwide, right? Not just Old Weathersfield. Townwide. townwide. Yeah. Okay. And Peter, does it include uh, those restaurants that have outdoor dining? Is there a separate designation for those? Uh, if they have it on their website, um, then they are linked um, on that. So we have not done anything customizable for all the individual uh, restaurants, but if they are promoting it uh, through their website, uh, our, our listing uh, would get them to that information. That would be kind of uh, nice to have a subsection now with uh, COVID continuing. So um, I know there's a lot of people, myself included, who don't want to eat inside. So, yeah. Right. Um, so, Peter, who can we get the, because I haven't seen the QR code, can we get it sent out to everybody on the, on sure. the email list? Sure, we can. Yep. And, and uh, once you get it, if you want to share it, um, mm -hmm. you know, then we can uh, hopefully. It, it'll take on a bit of a life of its own. I think. I think Jesse, you you did you get a copy of it from Denise? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think that would be really helpful so that we can start individually. And then Jesse, I'm assuming you're putting it on Facebook and Instagram. Yes, I, I I've I've shared it. I haven't put it on Instagram yet. I'm trying to figure out uh, how to do something like that. Yeah. Uh, Insta Instagram's a mainly uh, a phone um, app, right? So if you're if you're on your phone, you can't really go for the QR code. I could put I can add the link in, uh, but you can't click on it. So right. it's even uh, it, they can maybe copy and paste it. Uh, so I don't know. I'm I've I've just shared the post here and there. I'm trying to figure out a, a way of uh, promoting it a little differently. Yeah, especially so, on the phone, because I'm just thinking like the local breweries all have you order the QR code on your phone now. So because yeah. being able to access the QR code on your phone would be really handy for a lot of people. And about, I would say 65 to 70% of the people are now going are using their phones. Right. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. Good. But at least it's it's up and running. So I think that's. Yeah. It, it, um. I don't know. The it's like the flyer will be out anywhere. Um. If we're specifically putting it somewhere, or making yeah, copy. Yeah, I think Denise has uh, sent it out, and she encouraged um, folks to print it and post it in their in their windows. Um, yeah. I, I suppose we could get out there, but we probably need some volunteers, you know, with a handful to go here and there. I mean, that's another option uh, as well, but um, uh, so something to think about. Because uh, I, I was thinking maybe post uh, something saying, hey, you know, look out for these flyers and, and you know, and connect it that way. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. Keep us posted, but if you can at least email the QR code out to everyone, yep, I think that, that would be great. Um, and then we had talked about redoing our promo video. Um, and Peter, I don't know if you've had time to work on that and contact anybody. I have not. Well, we've, we've, we've had, we have been contacted by several people, but we have not had a chance to sort of sit down and, and go through the pros and cons of each of the, um, the vendors. So uh, that might uh, be a good project for a, a subcommittee if there's a group of people who want to spend some time working on that uh, with us. Um, but uh, yeah, that and that might help move it move it along a little bit. Uh, I know the town manager is uh, interested and supportive of doing it. Um, so I think it might just take a little push. He's in the throes of the budget process. So it might take a few weeks to get out of that. Um, so maybe uh, in, you know, three or four weeks, if we could get a group of people together, sit down and kind of weigh the uh, process of going forward that would be helpful okay um if anyone here is interested can you just use the reactions and uh do a thumbs up or raise your hand i think that was a katie and Mel was that a melinda melinda oh, and a jill and jill okay that's good okay good okay thanks um so and Judy. Oh, and Judy. 
So far, no mem. No, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I, sh I shamed Josh into it. Josh went into it. Ah, there, there you go. Look with, okay. with that. That's right. <laughs> See, if you're on the committee, you can highlight your organization or, or a special locale because you know you're on the planning committee. Just think about that. <laughs> Okay. Um, under new business. Charlie's Certified talking. What? Charlie's talking, but we can't hear him. He's muted. Oh, that's because Peter. Yeah. Him. All right. Here I am. <laughs> if, if Do you have to be on the commission to be on a subcommittee? I don't think so. Peter, they don't have to be on the commission. No, I, the it's, a, it's a subcommittee. So it's not. Oftentimes right. we'll have subcommittees with different membership different commissions so all right i'll contemplate it okay okay thank you <laughs> all right um certified local government so mary sent us the information finally yes she did um so so chris i think in terms of next steps um since a lot of the uh information needs to be pulled together from the historic district, district. commission maybe uh if you and i uh, want to ask to be placed on an upcoming historic district commission agenda. We can uh, share the process and the information needs uh, with the commission and then ask them to pull that together to help us uh, move this along. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. When do they usually meet? Uh, they meet, uh, actually one of the nights they meet is right after your meeting typically. I think it's the, um, well, Dam Damien's on, so he can probably plug in the details of that, but they meet twice a month. Mm -hmm. So on Tuesday, Tuesday evening. So it depends on what month it is and whether the Mondays have conflicting meetings. So it's it's next Tuesday night and then every other every other Tuesday night following that. Okay. So I'll, we, I'll, I'll talk to Kim and see if we can, or their staff person and see if we can uh, get on an agenda that doesn't have a lot of other applications pending. Yeah, well, I was going to say it might be a little too early for this for the meeting next Tuesday, but maybe the one after. Right. Okay. I'll, yeah. I'll coordinate that. Okay. All right. Good. Because that is potential for additional funding uh, yes. because they do grants through if you are a certified local government. So it is in our best interest to get certified um, and be able to tap into those those additional dollars. Um, CCGP projects. Quick update, Peter. Yes, we're going to have um, uh, town engineer has been, uh, I would say, tweaking the original designs. Um, we are uh, contemplating another public information sent session in uh, late April. Uh, the date is still uh, up in the air, but um, we're definitely committed to probably the, the, the second, uh, I'm sorry, the third or the fourth week of April. Uh, we will be sending out um, information letters to the residents. We, we've already done one public information session, but because of some of the changes that have been uh, thought of, we, uh, we wanna do that one more time. And then um, depending on how that goes, he will jump into final engineering and design to see if we can uh, do some of the projects this year. Um, we are getting lots of uh, interest in getting some additional uh, bicycle parking uh, on Main Street, so we may start doing that sooner than later. Uh, obviously, I would have to go to the Historic District Commission uh, for any of those as well. So um, that's in a nutshell where, where we're at. Okay. Um, and then it's not on the agenda, but I, they kind of always roll together. So the Bike and Pedestrian Committee is wrapping up its work. Um, and Peter, when are you looking at a public hearing for that again? Um, we haven't nailed down a specific uh, date. I've got some uh, odds and ends to complete before, okay. but we're probably going to uh, do a presentation with the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, sooner than that, just to make sure the recommendations are in line with what they want to see happen, because ultimately this will be approved by the Planning and Zoning Commission. Yeah. So I'll certainly, so, so any, any, public hearings would be a couple of months uh, okay. out, so. Okay, all right. Um, I'm gonna skip the annual report because that's me and I haven't done it yet. <laughs> <laughs> I 
being honest here. <laughs> um, bicycles. I guess, are, a, I guess that's a good reason. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so bicycles on Maine, I know several of you have been sitting on that kind of subcommittee. So one of you want to kind of give us an update on that? You want to run with it, Carol? Sure, sure. Uh, what I'm personally working on at this point is uh, getting volunteers to sit at our uh, information table, which will be in front of the Keeney. Uh, Amy is providing the uh, white uh, tent kind of covering on it, and I will hope that people will stay far enough away the information so that they'll be safe with COVID. The information that'll be on it will be the activities that various people are having. For example, like Heart of the Country, what are they going to be doing? Uh, what's uh, uh, drum roll coffee going to be doing? Not everyone that's a shopkeeper is doing anything special, but if they're doing something special, we will have that out. And as soon as I get all that information, and hopefully I will get that this week, it'll then be passed down to someone who will be able to do the computer work so that it will be on the computer as well. <clears throat> in addition to that, as we started the meeting before we actually got in, I said it would probably be a great idea that even though Web Dean Stevens is not open at the time of, of the May opening of the bikes on May, that we in turn would have all the information necessary as well as whether, uh, whether it's a historical society. So we can promote both of those, both sides of the street. What are they doing this summer? What are their plans? Uh, it, we can even look at fall kinds of things. And I had asked whether or not we had any QRs that people could uh, scan at that point to get things looking ahead into the future, what they might possibly, possibly be doing. Uh, Melinda is on that committee uh, as well, and uh, if you'd like to add anything, Melinda, that to, but that's my uh, involvement with it. Sorry. So, <coughs> excuse me, Joe, Joe Pasquale, our president of the Shopkeepers Association, popped into the store earlier today and just gave me a brief update. Um, they're going to have a uh, poster advertisements for the bikes on Maine. We also created an event on Facebook on Explore Old Weathersfield, the Shopkeepers Association, to ensure that our social media accounts are consistent. We have an Explore Old Weathersfield. Uh, page on Instagram. There you go, Carol's got the little flyer. And we also changed the name of our Facebook page um, to be consistent. It's called Explore Old Weatherfield. There's an event that's been created. Uh, Julie created that for us. So we're starting to see a lot of activity in regards to that particular event page, which is nice getting a lot of um, shares on it. Uh, and there's also some bikes on main pins, like buttons um, to promote it. So, which is, I think, awesome because it reminds me of first night Hartford. So there's a lot, a lot of press going on. I know that one of the news outlets is also going to be coming in. I think Joe said it was, NBC News, if I'm not mistaken, is going to be coming in and covering the event as well. Um, <clears throat> I know that we're going to try and coordinate, as Carol had mentioned, various things that are going on by or sponsored um, on behalf of each of the, the shopkeepers as well, and we'll coordinate that as those are identified. Um, Peter and I spoke earlier talking about various things that maybe the bike clubs can do in regards to bike safety or bike etiquette and we'd like to promote those as well. Great. Sounds like it's moving right That's along. It. Anybody has any questions? Okay. Amy. Questions? Oh Amy. Yeah. I just have a question for Carol. Um what days and what times do you want to have that tent out there? Amy, uh, did you have a question? 
Uh, the first day that we will have the tent out there, if you're able to do that, will be Saturday, April 24th. And we'll be out there with the same hours as the uh, Historical Society. And we'll be running it from 10 to 4 on Saturday. And then Sunday, April 25th, we'll be only doing it 1 to 4 because, again, those are the hours for the uh, Historical Society. And we will terminate the, uh, the tent being out with Saturday, May 29th, even though that is not the end of May, but that will be the end of the information that we will schedule. And I am looking for people who would be willing to do a three hour shift uh, on these days. I have Charlie, For Charlie Forsdick, and I know Charlie Ford is gonna work with me. Uh, and I've got a couple other people, but, uh, and I also believe, Wes, you had said that you'd be willing to do it. And uh, I'd appreciate anyone. Uh, there are a lot of people I could ask, but they may be too old and they may not want to be out there because of COVID. So if you give me a high sign, Katie, okay. Oh, Chris, you're willing to do it as well. And I have yep. Wes and I've, I've emailed Judy as well. So if Judy can get me her date so that I am not getting five people who want the same date, I'd appreciate that. Then I'll do some uh, emailing to everyone. Thank you very much. And when you talked about the restaurant QR, that would be a great place to put that. Whatever information we can put on that table that is going to have some interest for people and stimulate the trade within Old Wethersfield, let's go with it. It's a great opportunity to do it. Yeah. Okay. No, I think I'm, uh, people are already starting to talk about it. So I think it's great. Yeah, it should be really exciting. Charlie. Peter, do we do we have a boards ready? So thanks, thanks for bringing it up, Charlie. So if you recall, I polled the members um, late last week about whether uh, we could use uh, commission funding to help pay for the some of the init initial signage. The signage that we would purchase would be reusable uh, uh, for future years. It's neutral, time neutral. So. Um, so I would, uh, before we leave today, if someone could make a motion uh, to cover those expenses. So we would um, pay for uh, four um, A-frame, two-sided A-frame signs, uh, the boards for that. And then we would also cover the costs of a street banner across Marsh Street, uh, which would be two-sided. Uh, the costs of those uh, are probably now going to be uh, less, less expensive than we initially thought. So. Uh, if you uh, could entertain a motion to uh, expend, I think we could probably get it under $800. I think initially it was $1,100. So, um, and as I say there, uh, hopefully this event continues and the signs can be reused in future years. So if I could have a motion to um, authorize Peter to spend up to um, a dollar amount, and if you want to make it 900 to give him a little wiggle room uh, for the purchase of A-frame signs and the banner, I will entertain that motion. I make a motion that we authorize Peter to spend up to $900 for purchasing A-frame signs and a street banner for the bicycle on Main. Thank you, and second. do I have a second? Carol, second. thank you for seconding. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Thanks, Charlie, for reminding us about that. I had forgotten about the email. Kind of, are we interested? Okay. No problem. So, Peter, you are all set then on that? Yes. So, okay. uh, I've, I've jumped the gun and the orders have been placed. The A frame <laughs> signs. I, I, I pre this appreciate This is being recorded, you know. Uh, that's okay. That's okay. We did the poll, remember? On, we did. On we did. Yes, Thank I you. know. So. We're just we're formalizing the electronic poll. There you go. At, at, at least you guys are consistent. You didn't change your vote in between. <laughs> so the A-frame, the A-frames were supposed to be here today, Charlie. They might be here tomorrow. So. Okay. Right. You need me to do anything? Let me know. Okay. All right. Great. Uh, so Heritage Way, the Connecticut Greenways nomination. So, um, Peter, this has been part of uh, Bike Weathersfield and the bike pedestrian, and it's going to the town council? Uh, hopefully it'll be on Monday. Monday's agenda. Monday's. It would be, I think it would be uh, not required, but would be uh, helpful and supportive if yeah. uh, the Heritage Commission 
wanted to go on record uh, and support the uh, Connecticut Greenway's nomination for the Heritage Way. It does also potentially open up funding for the Heritage Way. And there are, I, I walked portions of it today. Uh, there are portions that need uh, some attention and ongoing maintenance. So uh, potentially if that nomination came through, uh, there might be resources to pursue uh, some of those improvements in, in future years. So it's a uh, DEEP uh, nomination. They've got a committee that reviews these on an annual basis. I think they would have an event in the fall if we were so uh, designated. And in addition, uh, Rocky Hill is also pursuing uh, the designation sort of in a partnership with us because the Heritage Way, although they call it something different, um, you know, is the continuous loop that also goes into Rocky Hill. So we're doing this uh, kind of in a partnership with both towns. Yeah, and just this, so this is the bike and the bike and walking trail that goes from the old Weathersfield Reservoir, the 1890 Reservoir down through into old Weathersfield and then into the meadows. Right. So I just wanted to make sure everybody was clear on what we were nominating. Yes. Um, so yeah, I do think it would be important for um, at least the council to be aware that we are supporting the nomination um, for the Heritage Way to, to be considered. Um, and do we need a formal motion or can we do it by consensus? I, I think a motion would be great. Okay. So entertain a motion. What am I moving here? You're I moving move that the that Heritage Commission um, supports the nomination of the Heritage Way um, as a Connecticut Greenway. Okay, I should do that because otherwise my husband will leave me. So I will make a motion. <laughs> <laughs> I will make a motion that the Heritage Commission will support the nomination. <laughs> You're laughing. <laughs> support the nomination of the Greenway yeah. program. Is that what how I should the say? The Connecticut Greenway. Did All I right, there we go. Connecticut Greenway. Thank you. And Judy, did I see you second that? Thank you. <laughs> All those in favor, either stick thumbs up or raise your hand. <laughs> All right. And that motion passes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and then, so the council meeting is on Monday. If anyone can make the meeting, that would be great um, to be able to add some support. And I hear feedback, but that's okay. Um, so it is already 6.05, but we had guests tonight. So. Um, running through, do we have any other old business or new business? Okay, uh, so Judy, you are up with EDIC. Hey, there's not much to report. Um, there is a business outreach survey that's going into the mail. Um, Peter, has it gone? Um, or are we still hoping that it's mailed? I, I think it's been mailed, so I, okay. I uh, haven't seen that, but I think it's or it's been, it was out the door. Yep. Okay, good. With some great questions for businesses all over Weathersfield to respond to and to help build our business community. Um, the other discussion was uh, the last meeting was about the um, restaurant directory and uh, everybody liked it, but um, Somebody mentioned that the chambers of the other towns are not really into it. So um, Weathersfield is gonna do it alone. Yep. So, and that was okay with everybody. <laughs> That's it. Okay, thank you. Melinda, you wanna add anything to the shopkeepers? You're on mute. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, the, the other thing that I just wanted to mention is, um, Bryce from the Charles restaurant, myself and Larissa from Larissa Lake and Company, um, as well as Melissa from Nutmeg Home have gotten together to talk about um, a cohesive social media campaign and marketing campaign for Old Weathersfield. And Bryce has really been taking the lead on it um, in, in keeping with some of the other areas like West Hartford Center who've hired their own marketing um, companies to help market their um, shopping districts. Um, we're all in favor of potentially looking at a marketing company to help us market Old Weathersfield 
um, uh, to to our community as a place to to explore, to shop, and and enjoy as a as a family friendly location. So, more to come on that. I haven't talked to Bryce. Um, I know that he was looking at a couple of different marketing companies to see if we could um, engage engage one of them to uh, really help us with a, a, mark, a formal marketing campaign and to help us with our social media. So more to come on that. <clears throat> okay. Melinda, I'm going to throw out to you if you haven't spoken with Adams and Knight. They do a lot for state tourism. So they might be, mm -hmm. you know, three quarters of the way there. Yeah, if you wanted to shoot me an email with their information, that would be great. And I can share it with Bryce and the others. Okay. Okay, good, thanks, Melinda. Um, Amy or Jill? Well, we have a lot coming up this spring. Um, we're opening up the Keeney April 3rd. Um, we're gonna be open on weekends in April. We're closed on Easter, um, but our usual weekend hours, which is uh, 10 to four on Saturday, one to four on Sunday. Um, then in May, uh, hopefully if the trend improves with uh, COVID, we hope to be open for our regular hours uh, during the week, Tuesday through Saturday, 10 to four, Sunday, one to four. Uh, we also plan to open up the uh, Hurlbut Dunham House and the Cove Warehouse Maritime Museum in May on the weekends, uh, instead of waiting until Memorial Day, which is usually our uh, opening day for those buildings. Um, so in conjunction with the Bicycles on Main, um, of course, we're hosting Carol's Information Tent. I understand there's going to be some kind of a kickoff ceremony on May 1st. Um, I haven't heard too many details on that. Evidently, the mayor is going to say a few words. Um, and that will be at the Keeney. Um, Amy, uh, they'll prob uh, Amy, they'll probably want you to say a few words uh, as well. They're still, yes. they're still figuring all, all the details. So we'll coordinate yes. that with you. Yep. I, I was warned about that. OK. <laughs> Come on, Amy, you can do it. So basically, I, I'll be like you know the MC, and I'll introduce the mayor. Um, <laughs> Um, on May 8th, we are going to have the Connecticut Wheelmen, uh, which is a great group that rides antique bicycles. Mm. And the middle of the day, they're going to be at Keeney. They're going to ride around uh, the village, around the green. Um, uh, once we get some numbers, we're hoping to get lunch for them. Um, but it'll just be a great attraction, outdoor attraction, to add to uh, the fun of Bicycles on Main. Uh, Amy, uh, question a question on that sure. day. Yeah. Do we need? Do they need police? Um, can, that you know, traffic would control be or fabulous if we could, particularly with that the length of Main Street where the cars just go tearing through. If I we would could agree. Some way to get traffic. Hopefully, there's going to be people out walking around too, and we need everybody to be safe, not just the bicycle uh, rider. I, I would. Agree. I would agree, uh, and Peter, there was a bad accident in um, Old Weatherfield Center not too long ago. It was just last week. Um, two, two cars collided in the middle of the intersection. So I would expect that um, as we see more people coming through to the center, we should probably have some police presence to ensure people are stopping at the stop signs and people aren't flying through there. Yep. Okay, so May, May 8th, what time of day is, uh, Amy, is that planned? Um, they're coming, I believe, at 1130. Um, okay. Or it's going to be like right around that uh, noon hour. Okay, okay. And they're going to assemble on the in front of the Keeney, and then they'll do their ride, and they'll come back to Keeney. Okay. Cool. Um, so that's May eighth, the fifteenth. We are hoping to do our first craft fair pop up event with three or four vendors on the Keeney lawn. Um, in addition to that, Bike Walk Weathersfield and um, Tom Brown from the high school are going to have tables. Um, 
bicycle activity tables um, on the Keeney lawn. They're gonna be uh, to the south of the driveway um, between the driveway and Chester Bulkley. Um, uh, they're gonna have, I believe a repair station. They're going to have some other two tables with bicycle related topics. So we're uh, glad to be able to host them as well. Um, also, uh, what is the date for that? I forget the date. Uh, it's toward the end of April. They're um, going to be, we were storing donated bicycles at Keeney for people who want to decorate a bicycle to uh, come and pick those up. So Tom Brown's doing that. Um, May 29th, there's no parade but we are gonna do a scaled down version of our usual um, presentation with reenactors. Instead of 75 reenactors, we're gonna have max 25, but we'll have the horses and the cannon and um, the craftspeople and a variety of things going on that day, 10 to three. Um, uh, also in front of Keeney, um, some of you who've been around a while may recall Weathersfield weekend years ago, um, one year there was a small timber frame building that um, Ann Kukro designed. Um, and we've had that building in pieces in the basement of the Francis house and we sold the Francis house last year. So now the building is behind the Keeney Center and we want to re-erect it. So we're going back and forth. We had to fabricate some new pieces for it. Um, uh, now we've got all the pieces. We finally decided where we want to put it. Next step is to go to the Historic District Commission um, to get permission. Um, we're looking at, again, that piece of ground in between the driveway and Chester Bulkley toward the rear of it. It's basically the size of a, of a large garden shed. Um, and it would be sort of like a piece of outdoor sculpture. We use it for teaching about the timber framing techniques. So that's something we're going to add to our outdoors. Uh, Keeney coolers, we will be having three this year, uh, July 14th, 21st, 28th. Uh, we've already got number nine booked for the 28th. Uh, again, we're excited about our 9-11 exhibit with um, uh, the Keene Foundation that will be in August and September. We've set the date for lantern light tours, October 15th and 16th and our Theme is Maritime Weathers Field, which will be our fall exhibit. Um, and then finally, um, we're looking at doing a project that will improve the space um, that we have uh, in between the Keeney Center and the Hurlbut Dunham House. And it struck me as Wesley was talking about the outdoor spaces in Weathers Field. And that's exactly what we're looking at. And so, um, Jill has been spearheading uh, this project we're starting to work on, so I'll let her talk about it for a minute. Okay, all right, Jill, you're up. Okay, thank you. So um, in looking, knowing that in COVID times that land use, you know, using outdoor space better is really important going forward. And also seeing how much um, people are using the public parking behind Keeney we're working on creating a stronger sense of arrival for what's the museum cluster in town. So we're working with a, um, a landscape architect firm who's going to come tomorrow and do a walkthrough with us and start the process of giving us some ideas that we would bring back to the town, of course, and discuss with um, Connecticut Landmarks and with Webb Dean Stevens of how can we make this more of a community space instead of kind of dead space because of the way that it floods and all that. So we'll let you know what we learn. Okay, sounds great. Jill, right. are you thinking about connecting all the way through to Lucky Lou's? It's a possibility um, something... because people cut that way. <laughs> yeah, that's why, I'm, that's why I'm kind of asking if, uh, mm -hmm. if that could serve multiple purposes in including you know, that connection, that might might be good for all parties involved. So just something to think about. Okay, Peter, we were wondering about um, sort of connecting up with the Greenway project that um, you were talking about earlier. 
definitely. Yes. So just something, and we definitely want to partner with um, the town on it where appropriate. Yeah, and it might be a perfect grant, you know, grant fundable project as well. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Keep us posted on that. All right, Joshua. Well, um, I'm really excited to say, and I guess maybe first time publicly here, that we are going to be opening June 4th. Um, the new building. We're super excited. Uh, and uh, have a host of dignitaries with us on June 4th for a, a virtual uh, ribbon cutting ceremony um, due to COVID. The, the dignitaries will be there, but we'll live broadcast it. Uh, that whole opening weekend will be free, open, uh, open, free of charge for the for the community to come see our brand new exhibitions and to uh, see the new building itself. Uh, that evening, we're hopeful to have the fife and drum band play in the courtyard. And then, uh, Katie, you want to make the the band announcement? Yeah, I'm really excited. Um, we are going to have a block party in the back that evening and eight to the bar is coming to play. So Woo! yay, see, everybody's excited. So yeah. Yeah, we'll awesome. yeah. Yeah. Uh, They're going to play 4th. from five to eight. Yeah. What June was that 4th? date? June 4th. <laughs> June 4th. June 4th. Okay. Write it, write it in gold on your calendar. You don't want to miss that. Yeah. You bet uh, you. I'll you know, be there. Gonna, that that is, uh, we're, we're Katie's getting a plethora of food trucks to come, well, and it'll be a food truck, self serve food truck, music dance party, uh, kind of event. But we're you know encourage people to bring their own lawn chairs, spread out on the back forty, so to speak, and be socially dif distant and safe. See the new building. The whole weekend then will be open, and then. We'll just keep keep on going. In in July, every Friday in July and August, we'll have music uh, in the courtyard in our in our new courtyard uh, from five thirty to seven thirty. Is that right, Katie? I think so I think so. Um, I'll have we've to booked, check, Cindy. Yeah, we've. I guess we will have fourteen performances. So I, I don't know. Uh, or no, I'm sorry, ten performances. I don't know all the the bands, but I'm told they're really awesome. So that's going to be fun. And Especially again, my encourage... son's band, come to the last one. Yep, we're encouraging people to bring their own lawn chairs, be safe, be, be distant, etc. cetera. Um, uh, and we've got some really great new exhibitions coming up that we're pretty, pretty, pretty geeked out about. And what else am I missing, Katie? Uh, the, the summer theater oh. thing. Yeah, tell them about, and summer theater. We have a, uh, you uh, know, Wesley's not, it's not Wesley, sadly, but we have a, Go ahead. Okay, right. uh, Edwards Bickey, who worked with the museum a while back, he's also a professor at um, in the theater department at Central, and he is going to be doing four performances, uh, well, two performances of Midsummer Night's Dream and two performances of Tuck Everlasting. So we're going to alternate weeks, mm -hmm. uh, Wednesday nights, right? I, Wednesday. I have a, yeah, and then the rain date would be Thursday. Um, so we'll be in the back and same thing, people bring their lawn chair. So we're pretty excited to, uh, to put this on. You know, it's a great opportunity for um, the local restaurants to offer to go kind that's of exactly, meals. Yeah. That's exactly what we're thinking, Chris, is that yep. we you know, invite people, you know, come eat, eat local, grab your, grab your, grab it and come and sit. And yeah. I mean, you've so, got uh, you know, Charles, our, our, Grange Fresh, Joshua, can you, can you, Melinda, Joshua, can you send can you send me an, an outline of what you just reviewed so I can share it with our shopkeepers association? Absolutely. Josh. Yes, I will. Thank you. And I'm going to need it, Josh. You know, we're I'm gonna really need excited. Okay, I will, Carol. We're, so we're just really excited to, you know, have the community really deepen our connection with the community. And, and we hope that this is just the, the beginning of, of the ways that we look to further engage with our, with our community. And to that end, uh, if you all want to see the building first, and if we can do it, Peter, uh, we'd love to host the commission at its, for its next meeting here, if, if people were, amendable to that if we can 
basically we've got the space that we could socially distant and I'd love to show the commission the building first or one of the first. It'd be great for a stakeholders meeting too, which would include all of the shopkeepers as well. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Okay, we'll figure that out. Good. All right, anything else? Can I have Amy make sure that she sends me all the information as well? Because those are the two big things right. that we'd love to have on that table. I know it's a big list. It's a big list, but it we doesn't have to be the main time. thing, right? <laughs> and don't worry, Carol, you have all of that. It's so exciting though, all the stuff that's coming. Right, I know. We deserve it after this past year. That's yes. for sure. Yeah, I mean, I was walking down there this afternoon. There were a lot of people out already. Yep. So they've been there all winter. Yep, I know. All right, um, Jesse, last but not least. <laughs> um, we should actually, I would. The order of these up, Peter. So, you know, Jesse <laughs> gets to go first, and then Judy's last, maybe next month. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, there is a lot going on that I just, I have like pages and pages filled right now because. <laughs> everything I just got. Um, it would be nice if I could actually get a list of uh, what's going on too, with maybe a slight more detail added to it. So I can kind of start adding things as we go along. And then as more details come, I can add the more details. So then at least gets out there and people know, you know, look for, look out for this, it's coming and whatnot. Um, let's see. Um, as for the social media, uh, we've been going up uh, a real lot uh, compared to, uh, I don't have the actual numbers compared to last year, but I'm very certain we're doing a lot better. Um, just within um, comparing from last month of past, the last 28 days, uh, we've gone up and people we've reached 282% uh, uh, which is pretty good. Um, we reached almost 40,000 people uh, within a month. Um, about out of that 40,000, um, 7,000 uh, uh, engaged, which is up uh, about 50%. And then people liking our page and um, uh, is up about uh, 160%. Um, so a lot of people, a lot of people are really um, excited about the um, the bi bicycles uh, on Maine, mm -hmm. and a lot of reaction with that. Um, mixed with um, you know different sites having articles, you know about you know the five uh, New England places to visit, or you know seven charming. Uh, uh, things you should do or kind of the seven charming Connecticut towns you should visit in 2021, you know, and the, the lists that Weathersfield keep making um, uh, have been helping out a, a lot. Um, and just by looking at what's to come, I think things are going to be really good uh, this year okay. and pick up quite a bit from w what we lost over the past year. People are dying to get out and do things. Okay. Uh, that, that's it. Yeah. Peter, I wouldn't uh, worry about it. <laughs> they're, they're loving uh, all these outdoor things. I keep adding uh, past videos that I made of, you know, the heritage walk, you know, things about the cove, you know, get out there, get fishing, boating, whatever, you know, out, just outdoor stuff, fresh air, get some fresh air, you know, so. Okay. All right, great. All right, Peter has to um, leave uh, for a 6.30 meeting. So unless we have other business, um, I think we can wrap up. So we should be all set. Um, I would like to postpone the SUFA discussion to next month when we get a little bit more information on the operating agreement and the vinyl decal and the rest of it. It's got some interesting possibilities. I'm not sure if we're large enough for it, but Let's talk about it next month. Um, quickly, any other business? Okay. Thanks, everyone. It was a good meeting. Bye, all. Bye. All right, bye, bye. guys. Have a good night. Have a good night. Have a good night. night. Thank you. Thanks. Bye, everyone.